everyone, Jane's Mantle here bringing you yet another tutorial. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to style a wig. A nice wavy style with a side part like the one I'm wearing right now. Let me go off the list of things you're gonna need for this project. You're gonna need, of course, a wig head and some sort of wig stand. You can use a styrofoam wig head or a canvas wig block. It's completely up to you. I'm using a styrofoam wig head because it's currently what I have right now. Okay, you're gonna need three types of sprays. You're gonna need a dry hair spray. I'm using Got To Be Glued. And in case you have a drier, older wig, you can use oil spray. This stuff is also great to use as a finishing touch for your wig to add the shine back to it. Two types of hair styling tools. I'm using a teasing brush with a pick at the end, as well as a brush for your brush out. I'm using this plastic brush. These bristles are great for wig hair. I highly recommend them. You're gonna need rollers, of course. I'm using these plastic rollers I got at Sally's for about $2 for a pack of eight, as well as pins to hold the rollers onto the head. I'm using these long dressmaker pins. You could also use millinery hat pins, whatever is a long pin that will stick straight into the wig head. Scissors in case you need to do emergency haircuts, a piece of scrap fabric or shoelace, as well as straight pins so you can pin the wig onto the block. Of course, a steamer and a blow dryer. A safe weight grocery bag. This one's from Versace. And of course, your super expensive wig oven. Mine is a cardboard box with a hole cut in the top side. And like I said before, I got that idea from Wigs by Vanity. I'll link her video down below just in case you haven't seen it yet. It's fabulous. And of course, a wig. Now, where could I get a wig from? Hmm. Oh, I know. Why don't I use an Arta wig? Thank you, Todd, for sending me this wig so I can use it in my video today. Go check out Arta wigs, they're fabulous. This one is a Matilda Classic in Titanium Blonde. Now, without further ado, let's get started on styling this hair. First things first, we're gonna take the wig out of the bag and take our hairnet off and be sure and save these things because they're fabulous to put over a finished wig. All right, gently remove her, shake her out a bit, and let's get her tapped onto the head. And when you put on the head, pay attention to where the ear tabs are going. All right, let's block out the lace quick. All right, now I'm gonna take a brush and brush through the wig quick, just to get the hair all going one direction. All right, and what I'm gonna do next is steam the wig straight. Now, if you're going to steam your wig straight and your hair is a little older, this oil spray is a good thing to use in combination with that because it will help get some of the kinks out of the hair that are built up with past teasing. And this is the wig brushed out on its own without me resetting it. So this is the nice set that Matilda comes in, which is perfectly doable for a teased out wig. But for this tutorial, I'm gonna set it all entirely myself. Turn our steam around, let those juices get flowing. There we go. And taking our wig brush, we're gonna comb down with the hair and just steam the curl out of it. And the reason I like to steam the wig straight is because with the curl pattern that's already in it, when you reset it with the curl pattern in it, there is a tendency for that pattern to interfere with your set. And the finished result won't be as clean looking because there's already a curl fighting back the one you just put in. And steaming on a newer wig is a little harder because the fibers haven't yet been broken down from being styled already. So it's gonna take you a little longer and it seems like a tedious step to do, but trust me, it's well worth it in the long run. And again, it's a newer wig. We're gonna try and get it as straight as possible. If there's still a little wave in it, that's perfectly fine. It's just those big jumbo curls you wanna avoid. Okay, and this is the wig all straightened out. And see, there's still a slight wave left in it. That's fine, it won't interfere with our curling. And again, if it's an older wig, it'll straighten out a lot easier because it's already been broken down from past teasings. Okay, now we're gonna begin the setting portion. Taking a comb, we're gonna put a part into the wig. And where you want the part is really completely up to you. Everyone's head is different, so a part will look different on everyone. It's completely up to you where you think the part will fall best on your own head. With mine, I always try to have a good amount here up on the top because the more volume I have, the more you can write it out to make a big bouffant kind of style, which is the end result I'm trying to get like this wig. And see, I'm trying to keep it a nice, even part. You kind of map it out to yourself how the part's gonna look when you style it up. See, that's not so bad, I actually like that, because you're getting a big poof here and a big poof here. That's the side, and we're gonna brush through it. This set is gonna be very similar to the set I did in my previous video. We only make one slight minor change that will impact the entire outcome of the wig. Okay, grabbing our rollers, we're gonna start rolling the hair. I always start with the part first. And like I showed you in the previous video, we're gonna try and keep our parts with our rollers as even as possible. So the amount of hair you put in there, just pay attention to and make sure it's not pulling from too many different areas on the wig. Like you can see where these tracks are. 
You don't want hairs being pulled from multiple tracks because that's gonna affect the outcome of your wig. Especially in this front area, it's very important not to do that because when you see that kind of foolery happening, it's gonna affect the outcome of the wig and you're gonna see like the final result have all sorts of hair straying everywhere else because the steam is gonna train it to go that way. And you can always try and fight back with hairspray and a blow dryer, but that'll only do so much. For the best result, you should just be patient and make sure the roller amount is even. Now, for a part, I brush upward like this because that's the direction I want the hair to go. You want a natural lift. Get a firm grip on it. And we're gonna start doing a roll. You're gonna take it, tightly wrap it around the roller at the end. If you have roller papers, it's really handy to do that and use those. And we're gonna slowly bring it down like that. Taking our little pin, pin it through. Actually, let me re-roll that. What you wanna avoid is having too much overflow here. So what, all you have to do is just make sure you have a tight grip on the hair. And sometimes when the wigs have layers in them, you have to fight a little harder with the hair. There, now it's tighter. I like that one better. Take our pin, stick it through. Let's work our way down to the second section. And doing my best to get an even amount of hair for this roller, and I'm not pulling from too many sections, let those sections live in their own section because they're going to have their time in rollers. This is especially important for the front section of the hair because that's the one people are gonna see and if it's messy, it's gonna show in your final result. And brush upward towards heaven keeping a tight grip on her, and we're gonna roll her. And a tight grip on your roller and just firmly bring that down to the head. When it's there, take your pin, stick it in. All right, we're gonna move on to the front section of the head. And like I said before, the only difference in this hairstyle setting pattern is just this one little direction change in the front. So these ones are being set upward and out this way. These ones are gonna be set upward and out going this way. All right, let me turn that head so you can see. Now the direction change is very, very simple. And bam. And when you perch the roller also affects the end result when you steam it. If you perch it going too forward this way, it's gonna lean forward in the final tease out. So if you can get it as close to the edge as possible here, where it's standing on its ends here, that's the way it's gonna steam out and you'll get more of a lift from it. And that's the only change in this rolling set. You have these sections going this way, so you'll get a wave like that. And these sections are going that way, so you'll get a wave like that. Give you that nice ladder wave effect. All right, let's finish this section down and we'll start the back. Now I'm gonna do one more section for you on camera and then I'm gonna do the rest off because it's a lot of the same. Or you can just watch my previous video. I'll link that down below. Brush that upwards towards heaven again. Cause we want some big old country hair. Gonna wrap that roller tight and bring it on down. I sometimes use my thumbs on the side like that to help guide the hair in to make sure it doesn't flow over the roller. There, it's tightly wound down to the head. You gotta take a long pin and just stick it on through. And if you have a little spill over like that, it's fine. You just don't want a whole clump hanging over the roller. All right, I'm gonna finish this section off camera for you and then move on to the back of the head. All right, and this is the final result on the curlers. This section's going down and this section is going up and away. Woo, and woo. Okay, so now we're gonna start the back section of the head. The curl pattern for the back section of the head is very easy. The top crown area are gonna go the same direction as these guys, and the rest of the wig is gonna go the same direction as these guys, where it's all just a straight row of curlers. Let me demonstrate. This section of hair right here is the crown portion. That's the rounded area here. That would be the rounded section here. You can see the way the tracks are sewn. It's the crown of the head. Okay, and we're gonna pull some of the hair and try and section it off as neatly as possible. Take our brush and let's brush it straight. Get out any tangles that might have happened from parting it. And holding it upward, we're gonna get a good tight grip on that, wrap it under, and bring it down. Using our fingers to section it nicely, tack it down to the head. Now this section's always a bit awkward when you have to section it off on a head because it's such a small area to work in. So the rollers are gonna lay a little awkward and that's completely fine because all this crown area is gonna do is add us back up to this front bang piece here and section it off neatly. And just wrapping up the last section of the crown, brushing it upward, 
and be careful not to uproot any pins that you sit in there. And that's the curling pattern for the crown area. It's just three going back the same direction as this front bang piece. So three in the back to match the front. And this back section here and this front section here are the same setting pattern. The rollers are all gonna go in the same direction. Brush through it and why not start on this side? Okay, get a clean section and brush through it. Cause even on this back portion, you shouldn't get lazy and just pull from any old area because it's gonna show in your final result. Brushing upwards because we want lift in the curl. All right, take our roller and see upward and matching this one. And I'm only gonna do a few more for you then finish the rest off camera. And if you wanna see more about how I rolled the back of the head, you can watch my previous video because it's a lot of the same. Cause as I mentioned before, the direction of the rollers are all going the same way. Okay, now as you see, they're all going downward in the same direction. Now I'm gonna finish the rest off camera. And if you wonder why I keep saying I'm gonna finish the rest off camera, it's because I have to catch a flight at six in the morning tomorrow, girl. All right, and this is the final result for the rollers. See, like I said, they're all going the same direction. That's the front and that's our back. Ding, 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 ding. All right, now comes time for us to steam set it. We're gonna grab that grocery bag and put it over the head like you're recreating a scene out of Black Christmas. First, pulling it tightly across the back of the head. We're gonna stick the steamer on in and let her rip. Pinching it tight with our fingers at the bottom so that we don't burn ourselves or let any steam out of the bottom. And just let the bag fill up with steam. And since this wig is brand new, I'm gonna let it sit in the steam for a little longer because I wanna make sure the hairstyle gets burned in there. Now, if this were an older wig, you wanna leave it in there for a little less time. Just feel around the bag and when it starts to get burning hot to the touch, that's when you know it's time to take it out. But for this newer wig, I wanna make sure it's under the heat for a long period of time. That way the set I put in there will last longer. And shift the steamer around because you wanna make sure the steam gets to the sides as well. And I like these plastic rollers because they get nice and hot and you can also stick needles through them. I'm just gonna tip the steamer and get the side of the head now. And what's happening right now is the steam is traveling through the middle of the rollers and heating the hair up all throughout. So it'll even travel through to the other side here as well. So yeah, if you feel back there, you can feel it heating up nicely. The back of the head's not getting as much attention right now, but we're gonna focus on that later. All right, and since it's a new wig, I'm gonna leave it under the steam for a little longer, like I said before. And make sure you use your other hand and pinch the bag shut because you don't want steam to leak out the bottom and then burn your hand. Let's switch sides and go to the back now. And just pull this upward. Shifting it around a little bit. And let's start from the bottom and cinch it down. All right, and we're just gonna let that sit under the steam for a few minutes. All right, I'm just letting that steam collect underneath there. Letting the hair burn up, getting it nice and hot, burning my fingers. Okay, now it's nice and steamed. We're gonna tie that off here and let it just sit in there for a little bit, loosely. You don't want it to press against the hair because it's gonna affect the curl. And while this is cooking in the steam, we're gonna prep for our wig oven. All right, I have the wig oven ready to go. We're gonna put the wig in there and start cooking it. We're gonna take our wig that we already steam set and we're gonna place it on in the middle of the wig oven and close her up. All right, and with the seal, we're gonna take our blow dryer and start cooking it. And quick tip, since the wig is newer, we're gonna leave it in there longer so that way we make sure the hair cooks the style in place. All right, and I'm gonna let that sit in there for about, you know, four or five minutes until the wig is cool to the touch. And like I said before, if the wig is newer, you wanna make sure the heat is set on there for a longer period of time. I kept mine on there for about 15 to 20 minutes just to make sure the hair got the style set in place. Okay, you wanna make sure the rollers are cool to the touch. That means they're done. Now we're gonna take down the curls. I'm gonna start from the back and work my way up. And that's how she will look. How bouncy it is. And that's the benefit of doing a longer heat set after you've done it on a new wig. If you take it out too soon, then there's a chance the curl may not stick. 
It's just those little touches, but a little patience goes a long way, especially with hairstyling. And what I'm going to do is have my hairsprays at the ready, my glue spray, and my brush, and we're gonna brush it out, holding it straight like that, and brush it, take some hairspray, brush it through, and with our fingers, we're gonna follow the direction of the curl, doing like a zigzag ladder up the hair. That wig is a nice little wave. And we're gonna do that as we take down the rollers. And it's easier to do this from the bottom upward because if you do it from the top, then when you get to the bottom, you have all this hair in the way. Hold it and spritz. Then drag your brush through it again to spread around that hairspray. And let's follow the natural direction of its curl. Like that. And you should get nice waves like that starting. All right, I'm gonna do the rest of it off camera and I'll be back shortly. Okay, now we've brushed out everything. This is the curl pattern on the wig. Now this is the back portion of the wig. Look at that wave pattern and all that texture. Now if you wanna live that flat hair life, you can leave the wig just like that, or you can do what I do, and we're gonna tease it out. All right, now for the teasing portion, I'm just gonna use a teasing comb with a pick. The pick I'll show you later. We're gonna worry about the comb right now. Now, like I showed you in the last video, you're gonna take a little section of your brushed out curl, and aiming upward again, we're going to bring some resistance down into the hair and really build up a good tease. The best way for me to explain it is you're starting from the bottom at the roots and building it up like a ladder. And we're not putting a whole lot of force into this. And we have a little tail of it hanging out here and we're just gonna keep dividing it section by section, little piece by little piece at a time and teasing it down. And the way I see it, I have the best result when I aim it upward and tease it down with the hair aiming upward. Because I'm encouraging that lift that we did with the curl pattern. The last thing you want to do is just tease a wig flat downward onto a wig. It defeats the purpose of curling it then. Alright, and for a wig of this length, I'm going to build up a strong tease in certain sections of the hair. I'm not really going to worry a whole lot about this bottom portion here because I still want length in the wig. Now if that's not a factor for you, you can go ahead and tease the whole wig. But for me, I'm only going to do a certain percentage of it. Alright, and the side tab here by the ear. Tease it upward. Because the worst thing about ear tabs is when it's teased downward and it just hangs low like that and you lose all that volume. We want it to poof outward. We're teasing it upwards towards the heavens. That's how you get hair that's stacked up high like Dolly. Okay, and that's the parted section of it. Now we're gonna move on to the top part. The top part is a little different in the way you tease it. What we're gonna do is, like we did before, pick a small section, but we're really gonna build up a strong tease here on the crown because that's where we want the most lift. See like that, and you can already see the part happening there. Grab another section of hair, small sections, don't go too much. Because if you pull too much hair, then the tease isn't gonna tease down properly. It's gonna be pulling from all sorts of different sections, and it's gonna be too heavy a tease. And when you start to brush it out, you'll see you'll start losing teasing. And see, I always start like a ladder. I go from the root, and then just build my way up. So you want a real thick, nasty tease going on the top portion. Because that's got to have the most lift. Just to give it that extra bit of drama. Even paying attention to the crown portion too. Lots of packing here at the top. And we're going to pack it high. But try and be neat with it. It's a little hard because after you start teasing, you're gonna lose sight of a lot of things. 
So if you're new to teasing, I'd recommend trying this on a darker wig because darker hair is a lot more forgiving, whereas with blonde hair, you're gonna see a lot more flaws pop out. Okay, that's the whole crown portion, along with the bang. And for the side of the hair here and the back of the wig, it's the same thing we did for this side. It's all going the same direction, but we're teasing upward and outward. All right, I'm gonna finish the rest off camera and I'll be back with you shortly for the styling. All right, I'm back. This is the wig all teased out. There's a lot of hair in it and it gives you a lot of volume. Now, here comes the fun part. We get to style it now. All right, get a firm grip on it and just lightly brush through it. And I try and keep the smooth out for the top layer of the hair. You don't want to dig too much in it because you don't want to pull out teasing. You're just dragging the brush over the surface and going all the way towards the end and just letting it cut loose. All right, I'm gonna start with the side section. Because once you get that all sorted out, the top part starts to come together a little more for you in your mind. All right, I'm working my way onward to the back. And a little thing that I do is I take the brush, get a firm grip on it, and drag it all the way down. And using my fingers, I encourage the curl that's happening with it naturally. And it's good to do this section by section. You don't want to do a bunch of sections at once. And see that portion goes up here. I'm just going to re-tease that and push it backwards. This portion goes over here as well. All right, and we're also gonna rotate with hairsprays. So I'm gonna use my wet spray and my dry spray at the same time. A few spritz of the wet, a few sprays of the dry, and we're gonna brush on through. Slowly going all the way through to the end, keeping a little tight grip on it, and encouraging the wave in the hair. And the goal is to try and get all the hair to be going the same direction. See, like that. All right, let me just work my way all through the wig. And bearing in mind my parted sections, like this top section here, we just want it pushed away out of our way because we don't want it to get mixed up with the back portion of the hair either. We're just kind of ignoring that for now. And when I'm brushing over it, it's going over the top. I'm not digging through it. It's pretty much like the brush is lightly grazing the hair. Because what it's doing is it's taking out all the little kinks that have gathered right here. And it's sort of like a combination with the brush and my hand. It'll help encourage that wave that's going in it. You can see it from the side. And we're gonna do that all around this portion of the head. And it's all a matter of just keep brushing it until it looks right to you. All right, and that's that top portion I'm keeping out of the way for now. I'm just getting an even part going. And feel free to pull from the top section too if some sections aren't quite even. And we're, like I said, we're just lightly grazing the top of it. All right, we're going with our hairsprays again. And we're just dragging it on downward. And like I said, when I said drag, it's not like a full rah, like raking through the hair. You're just trying to graze the top of it to get all the hair to go one direction. All right, and working our way towards the front again. This side section here, I always brush outward. And we're gonna spritz it some more. and really just get in there with the brush through. All right, what I'm doing is I keep brushing it downwards so that it joins down with the rest of the hair on the bottom so you get a nice even flow and the body waves look a little neater. Take some of your hairsprays again 
do the bottom. Like I said before, small sections at a time and just bring that brush on through and encouraging with your fingers the way you want the hair to lay. You see, you get a nice wave like that. And on the bottom of the hair, when you brush through it, kind of tap the bottom of it to get a little more bounce. Because you still want to encourage the curls happening and the wave. All right, let's get to work on our bangs. We're going to brush through and take a handful of it to encourage the way we want the lay. And I'm just brushing over the top portion of it because I don't want to remove too much teasing. And the more I brush through it, the more sections of hair I want to grab. And as you keep doing it, you can kind of tell the story it's trying to tell you. See, I brush it upward and it swirls backwards, giving sort of a nice wave effect. All right, in the back, we're not going to forget about that either. Similar to how we did this area, we're going to lightly brush over it, grazing the hair. And it may not be the most natural thing the hair wants to do, but we're going to try and blend it in with the rest of the hair. All right, we worked that back section. Now we're going to work the front again and zhuzh it up the way we like it. All right, I got the bump here the way I want it. We're going to use some hairspray again. And what I'm doing is sort of pressing it with a little bit of a grip and dragging the brush through the ends of the hair. So that way it can join with the rest of this brush out here to make more of a seamless effect. And just dragging that downward, letting the hairspray spread and letting the waves join the other waves. And honestly, you just keep doing this until the hair looks right to you. Give that little tab at the bottom to encourage the bounciness in the hair because you don't want to brush away all the curls. All right, I'm liking the story this hair is telling. I'm going to go with my fingers and sort of just pick through it the way I want it and zhuzh it. And this is where that pick comes in handy. We're going to pick in it and pull up some of the teasing that may have got brushed downward digging in at the roots and pulling it up. Another thing that helps is a little bit of glue spray. Let's dig on in there and encourage that teasing back. Do that on the sides as well. And the back too. No section left behind. And you honestly just keep digging on in there until you feel like it's symmetrical. Now I'm going to go through and do finishing touches where I just zhuzh up the hair. Make sure I have certain sections all laying properly with itself. And honestly, the part that will take you the longest is the front section of the hair because it's the most vital part because everyone's going to see it first. Like I find myself restyling the front section of the hair over and over and over again until it lays right on my head. And then I'll try it on and I don't like the way it lays and restyle it all over again. It's really a hard thing to teach because it's all a matter of your own personal taste. All right, I have it just about the way I want it. I'm gonna show you one last little trick that I learned. Gloria over at Wigs and Grace taught me this trick. When you see it's parting in certain areas, you just take your comb, dig it in there, Get like a firm grip on the hair and take like some hairspray like got to be glued or pump it up gold, either one. Then you take a blow dryer and what that does is it heats it up, it helps keep it in place so that those little breaks in the hair won't happen. All right, and this is the final result. A nice parted wig with lots of volume. All right, this is the back of the wig that nice wave pattern that I brushed out, and that is the front. And be sure and take your time to clean the hair up more when you style it. Personally, I really don't have the time because I have to be up at 6 a.m. to catch a flight, so it's not as neat as I would like it, but you get the gist of what I'm trying to show you. The more you brush through it, the smoother and prettier it's gonna be. Now, I'm just gonna go try this on, and I'll be back with you shortly. And this is the final result. You can do a lot with this hairstyle. Personally, I might take this section here and cut a Maryland bang in it so it gets that nice flip 
Other than that, you can do a whole lot with this and it's so easy to do. Not to mention it travels so easy, you can just fold it and pack it away. Again, I have to say a big thank you to Arta Wigs for supplying me with this hair. This is the Matilda Classic in Titanium Blonde. I'll link it down below for you. I hope you liked the video. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And comment down below and let me know what you want to see next. And it is holiday season, so don't forget to stop by my store down below and get you some Jane's Mansfield merch. Perfect for the holiday season. And a huge thank you to my supporters on Patreon. I couldn't do any of this without you, kittens. Thank you so much. And until next time, bye! Click here and watch me swatch Sugar Pills Liquid Poisons. Or watch my previous wig video. Come on, click it. You know you want to. If you don't click it, I'll write fan fiction about you and your cat solving mysteries. Click it!